One of the most significant differentiators for Solid Fire is its flexible scale out ability. On Solid Fire, we can add nodes, mix and match them even across generations, and also remove nodes without any customer impact. This video will demonstrate that ability and talk through some of the business benefits of this functionality. First, let's start with the Solid Fire UI. Right now I'm in the nodes tab looking at the current active nodes on the Solid Fire system. We have a six node cluster here, each of which is 3010 nodes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on pending nodes. Then we can see there's four additional 2405 generation nodes. These are the next generation nodes after the 3010. And I'm gonna add them into the cluster by clicking on the nodes and then I'm gonna click on add. Now we can see that once we click on the active nodes, that these nodes are immediately added into the cluster. To then trigger the automatic data distribution, we're gonna click on the drives tab. And then once we click under available drives, we can see that all the available drives for this particular node are currently there. Then once I select the drives and then I click on add, the automatic data distribution and load balancing and those types of things will automatically occur once I click on that button. And now the drives show up within the active drives. This data distribution process, depending upon the drive size, drives type, and so on, typically takes around 30 minutes, possibly an hour per node. For larger size nodes, though, it can take a little bit longer. Now the drives are added into the system and the data distribution is now complete. Since we have the flexibility to mix and match nodes, and we have our own data layout and space reclamation technologies built into our software, rather than relying on an SSD vendor, we can take advantage of any SSD drive vendor or technology, for example, MLC, EMLC, TLC, 3D NAND, et cetera, et cetera, drive types, or even different hardware platforms and integrate them into the cluster. Because of this ability, we receive the most rapid decline in price for expansion that other vendors can't emulate. At Solid Fire, we have seen a roughly 20% year-over-year price decline since GA. Other vendors can't emulate this rapid decline because of SSD vendor lock-in with various different SSDs, a scale-up based architecture that requires upgrading from a smaller size controller pair to a larger one at cost during one of these three expansions, or what is most frequently the case is that there's license costs, which offset any decline in the hardware cost. So at Solid Fire, we would recommend a different purchasing cycle as it pertains to, to storage hardware. So let's take an example environment where we have 50 terabytes per year growth, where we're gonna end up in 200 terabytes at the end of four years. And let's just assume a $4 per gig cost because it's a good round number and it makes the math very easy. On a traditional scale-up based system, we would purchase that 800K system up front in one lump sum instance, and then we'd have an annual cost of 200K at that $4 per gig price point. Whereas on Solid Fire, taking advantage of that 20% year over year price decline, what we would do is we would only purchase what we need for today. In this instance, originally it would only be 50 terabytes. Then from there, we take advantage of that 20% year-over-year price decline, scaling the system out, mixing and matching those different node types into the cluster. And of course, there's a significant financial benefit to doing so. In this particular instance, we saved north of 25%, in this case, uh, 210K over the total cost of ownership on the system by deferring those purchases and then taking advantage and mixing and matching those nodes within the cluster. Not only can we add nodes to the system and mix and match those nodes, but we can also take them out. This demonstration is going to show what it, what it looks like to remove an older generational node from a solid fire cluster and then talk about the business benefits of doing so. Now I'm in the solid fire UI underneath the nodes tab, and then I'm going to click on the drives tab and type in the, the node name for this particular node that we want to remove. Then I'm going to click to select all the drives and then I'm going to click on remove and automatically it's going to migrate all of the data off of these storage nodes once I click on remove. That's removing.
and once I refresh, now all of the data is off of those storage nodes. And we can see the data that, and then we can see the drives showing up right here underneath available drives. Then once I click on nodes, I can select that same node and I can remove it. And here's why from a business benefit, this becomes so imperative, the ability to remove nodes from the cluster. Let's take for an example where there's three data centers, data center A, data center B, and data center C. And then let's say that data center C has an additional increase in both the performance and the capacity that it needs unexpectedly. Then we can take that additional uh, capacity from, from data center A and move it to data center C. And we can also do the same from data center B to data center C. And by this ability to do so, not only A, do we defer a purchase for data center C and it need to purchase additional nodes, but it also reduces the stranded capacity. The other key benefit with this ability to add nodes in, mix and match nodes, and then in particular remove nodes from the cluster is the ability to automate generational data migrations. So on a solid fire system, what we would do is let's say we had a five node cluster here with these five black nodes, the SF3010, and then we can add in five new nodes. Let's say for example, a uh, five node 4805 cluster. Then we can add, then we can take out the old nodes and that entire generational data migration is completely automated on the system. So our process of taking the data off of one legacy array, getting all of the data off of it and onto the new legacy array is now automated within a couple of hours. Here's why this from a financial benefit becomes so imperative. Traditionally storage is purchased on either a three, four, five year or possibly a seven year cycle. But the challenge is in the major cost inefficiency is that there's an overlap during that data migration time period of getting the data off of the old generation hardware and onto the new generation hardware. Whereas with SolidFire, because we automate this process, then the new generation hardware gets pushed out and subsequently overall less needs to be purchased. So from a third party article here, according to David Floyer, the co-founder and CTO of Wikibon, these data migrations cost 31% of the four year storage array and support costs. So for a $300,000 array with $216,000 in support, that data migration, the process of getting the data off of the old array and onto the new array costs $163,000. First is the cost of buying that new array early up to five months in this particular example. We have customer examples right, left and center that have been much longer, possibly even nine months or even a full year. Then from there, the cost of migrating that data. There's a software cost to it, there's a labor cost. And then there's also more often than not a downtime cost associated with it, depending upon the particular apps. And then of course, the cost of retaining the old array as a failback. For more information on the benefits of SolidFire Scaleout, please visit www.solidfire.com scaleout. And please read the cost benefits of SolidFire Scaleout white paper. Thanks for watching.